today on What It's Like, Bit of a White Whale 1948 Diamond T 306 Tanker Truck. I'm willing to bet this is the most in-depth video covering Diamond T out there, but before getting into all of it, I am Jay. Welcome to What It's Like. Picture this, you just obtained, better yet, you saw a picture of a car or truck that really spikes your interest. You're interested in purchasing it, but the problem is this particular car or truck is one that never gets the coverage that it deserved. Well, you're in luck. This channel, we feature the lost and forgotten classics, vintage, some exotics. This channel is home for the orphan cars and cars that get lost in the strainer. If that sounds like a channel that you will totally dig, subscribe and hit the bell icon next to it to never miss a video. Finding out doing this episode, these trucks are getting rarer with each passing year. If you're looking for one of these trucks, you're in luck because this truck is currently for sale at Classic Auto Mall, Morgantown, Pennsylvania. This place is absolutely epic. Anyone can go there and guess what else? It's free to get in. For more information, pricing, and pictures on this gorgeous 1948 Diamond T306 truck, click the link below after the show. Let's talk Diamond T. Diamond T goes all the way back to 1905, and it was a car manufacturer at the start. Crazy, right? Like, who knew? Diamond T built cars from 1905 to 1911-ish. Sometime around then, one of Diamond T's VICs, very important customers, wanted Diamond T to build them a truck, a one and a half ton truck, conventionally styled. When the truck was built, the sky opened and the angels sang, from that moment forward, Diamond T exclusively built trucks. Diamond T was founded by Charles Arthur Tilt, more commonly referred to as C.A. Tilt. His father designed the iconic Diamond T logo. T stood for Tilt, the founder. And then he put a diamond around the T. Back in the day, the diamond shape stood for high quality. Diamond T's Best year was 1936 with 8,750 units produced. Diamond T built roughly a quarter of a million trucks from 1911-ish to 1958. White Motor Company bought Diamond T in 1958, but was able to operate both companies as separate entities. White and Diamond T were two totally different companies, but the money was being funneled into one pocket as opposed to two pockets. And that worked until 1967 when White decided to merge Diamond T with REO to form Diamond REO. Now question, is it Diamond REO or is it Diamond Rio? Anyway, let's talk 1948 Diamond T model lineup. Now, side note, this is just an outline of their models. They were the type of company that would build you whatever you'd like. The 201 was their smallest truck offering at the one ton rating. 306 was their one and a half ton truck platform. 703 was three to six ton. Moving up to the 809 and the 901, they were the big commercial. Not saying that the previous models wasn't commercial, but the 809 and the 901 were the big boys. This style of Diamond T was made from 1940 to 1950 with very little changes. Diamond T, just like every other auto manufacturer, had to stop civilian production during 43, 44, and 45 for World War II. Diamond T's main competitor was Mack, but they also competed with, the 306 competed with the International KB5, Federal 16M, REO C 19A, Studebaker M16. Wait a second. I'm a huge Studebaker fan, but man, that's a hideous truck. Anyway, list could include everything at one and a half tons. Ford, Chevy, Dodge, GM, Fargo. Everybody was making trucks in 1948. Let's talk 1948 Diamond T 306. The 306 could be broken down into two different categories, 306 and 306H. The H, I'm guessing, means heavy duty. 306 had a GVW of 12,000 pounds, whereas the 306H had a higher GVW of 13,500 pounds. On the topic of numbers, let's talk specs. Diamond T 306 could be had in three wheelbase configurations, and wheelbases had everything to do with how long of a body you could put on the chassis. 127 inch wheelbase would give you a body length of eight to nine feet. 
140 inch wheelbase would give you a body length of 10 to 11 feet. 150 inches was the longest wheelbase offered for the 306 and that had a 12 foot body. Ways, it's a variable. It's based on what truck you ordered and what wheelbase and what body and they were all different. So that is a variable. Price, $1,020 and the price is just for the chassis. The cab costs extra. Drivetrain was included in price, but you had to pay for everything. You had to pay for the cab, you had to pay for the bed. All of it was extra, and that would be equivalent to you spending $12,612.84 in the year 2023. Just to reiterate, that was for the chassis and the drivetrain. Before getting into the engine specs, let's talk about Hercules, the manufacturer who built this power plant. Not to get confused with Hercules sold at Harbor Freight, two totally different companies. Hercules Motor Manufacturing Company was founded in 1915. They built industrial engines, mostly for trucks, but could also be found in tractors and stationary engines to run heavy equipment. 1923, the company regrouped and reemerged as Hercules Motor Corporation. Hercules would have a major growth spurt during World War II, making some 750,000 engines, both gas and diesel. In 1961, Hupp Corporation bought Hercules, but they failed to grow the company. So in 67, White Truck Corporation bought them. The company would be traded a couple more times throughout the years before closing its doors for good in 1999. Let's talk engine specs. 236 cubic inch displacement. Q. XLD3 flathead 6 3.9 liters. It's good for 91 brake horsepower, 3200 RPM, 190 pound feet of torque at 1400 RPM, with a bore of 3.76 inches and a stroke of 4.25 inches. Compression 6.5 to 1. Seven main bearings. This engine holds six quarts of oil. This truck is mated to the Warner T9 four speed manual transmission. If you dig this channel, do me a solid and hit that like button so more people can see this video in the future. All right, so let's talk styling. This is a truck that I've never seen in person. I've seen in pictures, but let me st take a step back here real quick. This is like a full size truck in miniature. It looks very similar to like a Federal, but this is a Diamond T. So let's talk styling. Notice, look at these fenders and how they come up to a point and then kind of plateau off as they go into the hood section. This one's got footwell. It's like a cow vent, but it's for your footwell. It's a foot vent. Oh, check that out. Secret compartment there for storage gas filler cap is on the passenger side this one's got a shell tanker gas tank in the back as well as pump so just check out all these different nozzles this one's got split rims but it's the uh, star pattern split rim design Look at how this is designed. And they use it as the drip rail over here. Check out the running lights or marker lights on top of these nice headlights. Check out the grill, it's a very intimidating grill. Up here, just notice how this is all designed. It's not straight, it's not flat, it actually bulges out a little bit. Look at how thick, big that bumper is. There's another foot vent. Getting inside, just notice the contrast in color. So have nice bright red outside here and inside it's very utilitarian, like a primer color gray. Just my finger for reference, this door is very thick and it's all metal. 
door handle to get out, window crank for the big window, and it operates this. Just notice how it's designed. Also just notice how this door is designed. Drip rail. Getting inside. Actually, before getting inside, let's go down inside the pedal box down here. High beam switch on the floor. This is the vent for outside ventilation. Clutch, brake, gas pedal. Notice where they're mounted. They're not really mounted on the floor. They're coming up out of the floor, kind of like almost perpendicular at you. Handbrake over there, gear shift lever here. Getting inside. You just step on the thing. Okay. So that's what the door sounds like when it shuts. Here's what over the hood impression looks like. It feels like I'm driving, it, it feels like you would be driving like an armored vehicle. That's the sort of vibe that I get from the split windshield. Here is what first person looks like. Here's what under the steering wheel situation looks like. I wear size 34 pants. If you wore size 36 or 38, you should be good. Anybody bigger than that, it might be a little bit snug. Here's what I look like. Tons, tons of headroom in this truck. This truck feels a lot smaller. It feels cozy in here. Not small. I shouldn't say not small. It's weird. It has like a beefy feel, but it doesn't feel big. Like it's weird. These seats are so comfortable that it's ridiculous. I don't know if these seats are supposed to be in here. These seats feel very comfortable. They're, it's probably one of the nicest seats in any truck from this era that I've ever sat in. Super, super comfortable. The material is very plushy. It's just a really nice seat really nice place to be also check out the seat profile it's a bit upright but it's not bad on to the button switches and knobs at the top are three poles i have no idea what they do generally i get all of the button switches and knobs information from dashboard diagrams that are found inside the owner's manual but just like the information on this truck it's very spotty and i couldn't find an owner's manual so if you know what they go for put it in the comment section below i assume one is for the lights one is for the choke one is for panel lights and or windshield wipers oil pressure amp meter speedometer with odometer at the top water temperature gas gauge key starter button there's a storage be up top here i don't know if this housed something if this is where the windshield wipers were i was assuming that this was the windshield wiper switch there's when there would be windshield wipers that hang down on both sides and you're probably wondering what are these cranks for so these cranks are very interesting so this has a crank out windshield but it doesn't operate like you think each side has its own individual crank out windshield how cool is that i never saw a truck that had dual or a vehicle for that matter well i can't say that i i saw earlier trucks but i haven't seen one from this time period have this feature very cool feature the heater is down here right there and i think this is what controls it a nice light back here that's controlled by the switch that is rear visibility it's non-existent. All you can see is the tanker that's in the back. So this one's got a butterfly hood. It just lifts up like this. When you get to, to a certain spot, it locks this arm. So that keeps it in the upright position. Look at these horns. Oil filter generator it's a flathead six engine we're gonna go around over here to the exhaust side pick this up so you can see what the uh, hoods look like when they're open so here's the carburetor and exhaust side it's got a single downdraft carburetor back up so you can see what the hood looks like when it's up 
I wonder if Tesla got inspiration for that for their Falcon wing doors. Look, it looks very similar. So if you're ever looking for the VIN number as well as data sheet, it's right here on the passenger side underneath the hood. But also notice only about two thirds of the engine is accessible. The rest of it sits underneath or behind the firewall. Like coming over here, you can see it a little bit better. You see how it's kind of tunneled out? Because in the nose, that's where the radiator is. So they had to push the engine back and it sits back in there more. On to the pros and cons. This truck, shocker, it's not in the book of collectible cars, which is sort of, I guess, in the title. So these pros and cons are based on my personal observations. On the positive side, it lives up to the name or the hype, Cadillac of the trucks with super comfy seats, dual opening windshields, and quaint gauges built solid and looks like a tiny commercial truck or a commercial truck in miniature. Cons, information, and people who know these trucks are becoming more scarce with each passing year. Tons of information on the 201, which is the one-ton version. Higher models, the higher you go, the less information available on the internet. So you might have to go to a library to find the information that you need. Now it's time for Name That Tune. First person to give me both the correct name of the band and song title. First person to do so correctly will have their comment pinned to the top of the comment section. Thank you all so much for coming out and watching this. If you'd like to get in touch with me, shoot me a comment in the comment section below. I read and answer all comments posted. The other way is we have a Facebook group that correlates with this YouTube channel. No obligation to join. If you're interested, the link will be in the description. If you'd like to contact me one-on-one, -on -one, shoot me a message on Facebook. So if I catch you on here or Facebook, just know I appreciate everything. Now it's time for some scenes from our next episode. 1955 Dodge Cornet. This one is powered by that legendary 270 cubic inch displacement V8 Red Ram Hemi. Can't wait for that one. I hope you guys are excited as I am. And until next time, toodaloo!